this week is about being uh, being thankful, and I'm very thankful for all of you. I'm extremely, at this moment, thankful for Mr. Jay McKinney because not only does he do everything that is needed without asking, he does it to another level. I asked him to be on at 9.55, and I offended him by saying that because he said I'm going to be on at 9.45, and I could tell through the text message that there was some heat coming off that chair that he was sitting in when I sent it. So, Jay, I apologize for that. But, brother, I love you and I appreciate it. And most importantly, I'm thankful that Jay would confide in me and tell me that him and his uh, his wife's plans of making this his last year as a computer guy and an employee for the parish, the Rapids Parish. So I appreciate and I'm thankful that he would confide in me enough to believe that I could help him reach his goals and dreams uh, and, 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 and make that decision. Same way I am with Daryl McNeil. Uh, so thank you for that. So Jay, what I want to do really quickly, if you don't mind, here's what I want to talk to y'all about today. Okay. I want to talk to you about passive and residual income. Okay. Now there's, before we go into the cash flow quadrant, I want you to, I want you to think about something. I met Thaddeus one time. I don't know anything about his background, but I do know he showed up in Alexandria an hour away from his home around about uh, when he could have been at home watching TV, playing Nintendo, taking a nap. There's things he could have been doing besides coming to get a little bit better with us. OK, Seth DeVille works all day on a I mean, car engines, gets in his car, drives over here with Thaddeus to spend a little bit of time with us instead of going home and playing whatever it is that people play like that kind of stuff to me is the start of something special, right? That is the mindset that it takes to actually go to the next level. Here's the problem though. In most cases, you don't have a tool or a vehicle to go to the next level. Am I right or wrong? I mean, Seth, you're not fixing to inherit that mechanic shop that you work so hard at. Okay. Cole, baby, they're not giving you that car dealership. I wish they would. I think you deserve the car dealership. Okay, I do. I know you. You're a family man. You're a great guy. They're not going to give you that. Okay. Shandrika, you ain't going to own Kroger. Okay. And DJ, you are absolutely not going to own LSU. Why am I going to all into all these things, guys? I was never going to be in a position where I could own a Sonic. Do y'all understand that? That's where I was working. The guy who who owned the Sonic, his name was Ted. He, I never met him, okay? And he was not going to make me part of his ownership uh, positions. I figured that out, okay? So what that means is I was going to be an employee, either hourly or salary, right, for the rest of my life, right? And then I would never be in a situation where I could own anything, which means I would be in a situation where I never controlled my time or my money. Are y'all with me on that? OK, now I may get a little bit of vacation toward the holidays, but that does not something I totally control. So what that means is I would never be in a position to make passive or residual income. Are you all with me on that? So, Jay, pull up the cash flow quadrant. Guys, I know you all have seen this, but I want you to live it. I want you to put yourself in the situation that we're about to explain and ask yourself, how is it going to change besides Primerica, okay? Like it says right here, your an employee is based off the job is based off the position, not necessarily the person, okay? I know Whitney is an incredible person, okay? I've known her for about a year. I know Vita is a remarkable person. You know, I know that Dejanay is awesome. But what difference does that make if there is no position for an awesome person to take advantage of where they work? It makes no difference. You could be the most talented person in the world, Seth, but if there's no position for you, there's no position, which means you cannot move up, although you are remarkable. You are the perfect mechanic. I was, you know what? I was the best burger flipper and fry fryer in all of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It's a fact. I could do two at once. I didn't, I could do, I had two hands. I could move, I could shake. But the problem was, Seth, is Mr. Ted did not have a store that he was going to give me. Does that make sense to everybody? That's just what it was. I was the strongest non-commissioned officer in all of Alexandria and Pineville. Okay? But they did not have an E7 slot available for me. 
I came in early, stayed late, didn't use too many curse words. I was, I, I passed all my physical fitness tests. I was a mate, but they didn't have a spot for me, Jay. I don't know why they just didn't have a spot for me. And that's where most people are. You could be the best, hardest worker in the world, but if there's no spot, there's no spot, right? So here's what I had to understand. And it took me getting deployed, Cole. It took me having to spend the holidays away from my family. It took me having to spend the weekends away from my family. It took me having to say no when it came time to buy my wife a new car because I didn't make enough money. That's what it took for me to get my mind right. And that's what I'm asking you to do is at least uh, entertain this for one for one minute, okay? If you look at the bottom left, every, if you're an employee in here, or you could be self-employed, which means you control your time, but you don't fully control your money. Now, here's why I'm so proud of Thaddeus and Seth, who I mentioned earlier, Cole, Whitney. You are employees at a job, which you know how much you're going to get paid. Some of you may get paid uh, commission. I'm not discounting that, but you pretty much know how much you're going to get paid, and you pretty know how know how pretty much know how much you're going to work. You choose as a self-employed Primerica agent to come spend your time getting a little bit better with us. I can work with that. I don't care where you work. Although the reason I know where Whitney and Seth and Cole and these people work because they're my they're they're important to me. So I know what their lives are like. You know, I know what's going on. But my point is this. I don't care where you work from the standpoint of your qualifications, okay? Seth DeVille turns wrenches every day. Tyler Craig was in there meeting with top wood executives every day. It's the same thing for me. It makes no difference for me. You're the same. What's inside of you is what matters in Primerica. And what are you willing to go do, Cole? That's what I'm talking about today. So as a self-employed person, okay, Jay said I'm fed up with not being able to make enough money. My wife maybe doesn't like her job. Whatever it was for Jay to say, you know what? I want to now own it, okay? What you have to start understanding is you have to be a very, very efficient self-employed person. What that means is you do what you're supposed to do when nobody is watching, okay? You do what you're supposed to do when nobody is watching. You see, the pe when I worked at Sonic and I was the manager and people didn't do what they needed to do, well, I, I, it was easy for me to see because I'm right there on it. It affects me, right? You don't chop the onions. You don't fill up the ice bucket. You don't sweep the parking lot. I could see that. So that's going to probably make you want to do it a little bit harder because they didn't want me to fuss at them. But what are you doing when nobody is watching? Are y'all with me? That's the kind of stuff we got to start thinking about and talking to people about, okay? Uh, if that effective self-employed person, they study, they read the books, they, they pay a price, like I was talking about with Seth and Thaddeus. They do work in the evenings so they can have a better life down the road, right? Self-employed people control their time, but they don't fully control their money, okay? Now, that's exactly right, Dejanay. So if you look at this, the business owner side, a minute ago, I told you, now, there's a lot of business owners that fail. Nine out of 10 small business owners fail. But why do people go into business? Jay, short answer. Why do people go into business, in your opinion? Why do you think people want to go into business? Because they want to control, you know, their income. And, and they, they don't like working for somebody else. Okay. Why would you want to do that, though, Jay? I mean, business owners have a lot of stress. They got to deal with people. They got to keep up with inventory. They got to work on weekends if it calls for it. I mean, they got to really work hard. Why would you want to do something like that? I mean, you just don't want to keep punching the clock. You want to be able to call your own shot and do what you want to do. And, you know, you're going to say, I'm going to make that choice. 100%. Now, what we have found, including myself early on in my career, I wanted to call my own shots, but I wasn't mature enough to call my own shots. That's a little bit tough right there, Jay. That's one of those deals where you say you want all these things, but what are you doing when nobody is looking is what separates people. That's what separates business owners. See, the, the biggest, I read a study one time, it said the biggest reason small business owners fail is because they underestimated the price that has to be paid, right? You can have all the money in the world for your business. You can have the best idea in the world for your business. But if you don't understand there's a price that has to be paid until that thing gets built, you're never going to make it. You're never, ever, ever going to make it. On the other hand, you don't have to have a bunch of money. You just have to have a ridiculous work ethic and be mature enough to hold yourself accountable to what it is that you need to do, right? And that's the beauty behind Primerica. Now, having that said, and I'm not saying this to brag, a minute ago I said I could never own the Sonic in my previous situation 
I'm pretty sure that the bank would loan us enough money to buy a Sonic right now. But I couldn't have done that in my previous situation. It's Primerica that got me there. And it's Blake, my mentor, that got me there, along with a lot of hard work. So if I go, before I go into the second part of this, Blake, are you there, buddy? I know I told you, 10, 10 I know you're traveling. Are you there? Oh, I'm here, my man. I am here for you. Let's get it. Can you see me? Yeah, take it away, man. I, didn't, I don't want to hold you. I don't know what you got planned, but we definitely want to hear from you before you have to, before you have to roll. Oh, it's great. Can I see clear? Can you, un you unshare that? I love that. Uh, the quadrant. My, you were saying some things and every time you would say something, I was putting it in my phone to, to say almost the exact same thing. So if you can take that just really quickly, you can just un unhide the side. There you go, Michael. Hey, buddy, you're looking good this morning. I like that painting too, in the background. No. And, and so, look, every everything when I listen to Mike talk like this, I can tell, you know, how just on it he is in his business and how serious he is. And what a great topic for this. And I appreciate a lot of you guys. When you're getting on and you're listening this Saturday morning, you're growing. That's what that's what business ownership is, right, Mike? You know, you think about the left side of the quadrant on, on the cell on the um, on, on the employee side. Is employees don't want to work on a Saturday or on a Sunday. They they dread going to work on Mondays and stuff like that. They never, you know, the, the the lack of progression uh, sometimes, you know, stops them from really having that joy of optimism of of doing something special with their lives. And we slip back into the comfort, just like you said. I was thinking about that, you know. Mike, you couldn't own a Sonic back then, and you just said it, but you could own a Sonic now. And that's the thing is, is that sometimes people try to look for easier ways or better ways or et cetera, et cetera, to do that. And, and there's really not much of that besides just going out there and getting after it, getting to work and doing the necessary things. And I'm reading a book right now. It's called Relentless. I really hope a lot of you guys will get that. It's by Tim Grover. But it talks about going from good to great to unstoppable. Right, Mike? And I was reading this part yesterday. It reminded me of you. Um, and versus a lot of the other people I've worked with in this business, right? And what it talks about is that uh, uh, it was saying that certain people are never in a situation where they have to be clutch, meaning that we're talking about sports. Tim Grover trained Michael Jordan and Kobe and all those guys, Mike. But he was talking about in business too. Really, he was relating this to business that when people are employees, they really don't have to ever be clutch, if that makes sense. They're just doing the same thing. Clutch means you go close a sale when you need to for your family or you close this big deal or whatever, right? So uh, uh, certain people are never in that situation. Certain Some people are clutch only in high pressure situations. So Mike, what do you think about that? That means you ever heard people say, well, when my back's against the wall, when my bank account's down to nothing, when my I got to pay this light bill or this rent bill, then I'm clutch. I can go close the sale. I can go make things happen, right? Well, that's just a getting by mentality. We always talk about that. And that's not what we're talking about this morning, Mike. And you did such a perfect job. We're talking about getting wealthy, residual income, getting ahead, right? There's nothing that makes me happier. I'm right now in Scottsdale, Arizona. Mike asked me to speak. Me and Lindsay are about to go shopping in Scottsdale. That's where Lindsay's from. We have a big thing tonight, right? Well, that's to have the freedom to be able to do that whenever you want. And then travel whenever you want, the lifestyle when you want. But it, but it just boils down to, Mike, what me and you did 15 years ago. We just started building a business where we knew we'd get residual income. We knew we'd reach a point where we'd have a certain amount of money saved and a certain amount of money coming in, whether we worked or not. And we were what? We were relentless. We were relentless on the day in and day out progress. We were relentless in the day out and day in and day out schedule, knowing that one day we would be in a situation where money was money didn't matter. We can do what we wanted to do. And we built a business with residual income. But Mike, like what you talked about, and then the last part of this is that some very few people, and I thought about Mike on this, I thought about you know, myself and a lot of the great leaders in this company, but a few people are always clutch, right? You know, they, they, he was talking about Michael Jordan. They said Michael Jordan was clutch. Yeah, he was, but wasn't he always clutch? Didn't he always score, right? Didn't he, wasn't Kobe, wasn't Kobe always dominated. He always scored points. He just did it a lot in the fourth quarter and at the end of the game too. It's the same it's the same scenario, right? But 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 certain people, business owners, people that have that mindset, they're always clutch to the family. Not just when things get tight, not just when they have to, not just when Christmas rolls around, but man, all the time. And when you think about it, and I look back at the last 15 years, Mike, and you asked me to talk about residual income. I've had businesses that I've invested in over the last 15 years. And you know what? None of them have really turned out very well. OK, you know why? Because Mike said that exactly what he just mentioned. Nine out of 10 businesses do what? They fail. So and you know what the average cost is to start a business? One hundred and fifty to two hundred and fifty thousand. So let's let's logically think about that. One hundred and fifty to two hundred fifty thousand. I'll start a business. Right, Mike. And then nine out of ten. So I don't, I don't you might hit it the first time. God, hopefully you do. I know I didn't. You might hit it on the 10th time. But would you agree that a lot of times? There, you, there's not enough. You don't have enough money to try to get into time four or time five. Most people don't even have enough money to try to get into time two, 
right? And so what is it with Primerica that's different? Building a residual income here. And I'll close with this. It's the opportunity to build a financial service business that pays you residually for the rest of your life. And then it also allows you to recruit, train, and develop amazing people like a Mike Hayward, like a Jay McKinney, like a Brandon Seals, like a Seth DeVille, Darius Charles is on here, DJ Brown, like all you guys in Invasion A's on here. If you think about that, when you get to RVP, this is your business. Dejan A just got to RVP. Some of you guys are so close. It's your business. This is your business forever. You can pass it down to your kids. You can sell it. You can do whatever you want to do. And guess what, guys? You don't have to put in one hundred and fifty to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to do that. But you know what you need? You do need to do. You need to put in one hundred and fifty to two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars of work time into that. How long would it take you at your job to make one hundred and fifty to two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year? Ask that. As how long? How many hours would it take you? Or how, how many years would it take you to make that? How many hours would it take you to make that? And then put that amount of time into your Primerica business. And all of a sudden, you know what happens? You're going to have a business that pays you $150,000 to $250,000 a year residually. And that's the mindset I want us all to have. I want us to have that mindset of, of, of growth, of, of abundance, of amazing things this holiday season. But you know what? Why I'm so diligent on this, on this topic, Mike, and I'll close, is that this time of year, this season, when you start to develop those habits, when you become clutch all the time, when you say, you know what, I'm not just going to be clutch. I'm not just going to go out there and close sales when I need it for a bill or I need it to pay rent or I need it for Christmas. I'm going to go out there and be that way day in and day out. I don't care if five people tell me no. I don't care if 10 people tell me no. I don't care if I have to travel an hour or two hours. I'm going to get it done because you know what you're doing? And Mike can attest to this. We're building equity. Somebody just mentioned that. You're building time equity in your business. You might travel an hour or two. You might do that. I did that over and over again, three hours, four hours, five hours traveling. Now we got Zoom. We don't have to do that as much. But you know what? We still have to have that work mentality and that business mentality that this business can do so many special things for your life. And you don't have to put in a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars to do it. You don't have to take the risks. You just have to put out the effort. And if you have great leadership like we do on here, man, I'm telling you, there's nothing better than knowing that in five years, 10 years, 15 years from now, you can have a business that pays you hundred to $150,000 a year or way more without you having to put any effort into that. You can travel, you can do what you want to do. You can have the Christmases you want, but that mentality does not start future down the road. That, it starts now. It starts day in and day out activity in order to reach those goals long-term. So Mike, I hope that helped. I just wanted to hit that. I think those points that you went over uh, were just so, you, when you started talking about nine out of 10 small businesses fail, they're not going to give you a sonic man. I was, I was thinking I'm about to say those exact same things because that's the truth. But you know what? We will give you your Primerica business and you ain't got to put 100 to 100 to 250,000, right? Jay Dejanay, you ain't got to do it. Not only will we give you your Primerica business, we'll give you $15,000 of stock to do that. You just have to put the work out to get it, not the money. And I think that's a special thing. So thank you, Mike, for having me on today. I love this team. I love where we're headed. I know this is Thanksgiving week. I'm incredibly thankful, as I'll tell you all this week for each and every one of you guys, Mike, especially you, man, be able to do this business with you and live life with you these last 15 years, man. I couldn't be more grateful and thankful. And I'm excited about this Thanksgiving week for us to dominate and have a great week with our family. So appreciate you having me on. Thanks, buddy. We love you, man. And to your point, you know, you think about this because the reality of it is, is DJ says something and I made that comment about buying a Sonic. There's not a chance in hell I'd buy a Sonic. And here's why. OK, here's the point. The return compared to Primerica is not even close. Think about this, Blake. If I if you put up one point five million dollars to buy a McDonald's, OK, and all the things that you have to deal with, along with putting up one point five million dollars, what you're doing is you're purchasing a franchise that's going to send back about one hundred and fifty thousand in net profit. OK, so I'm going to put up one point five. I'm going to make one hundred and fifty. And what happens if it fails? I lose my one point five. No, there's no chance. There's no way I would do that, right? And then the point behind that, guys, is if you understood, or let's put it another way, if you had to put up 1.5 to join Primerica, people would take it a lot more serious, right? If you had to put up $10,000 to join Primerica, you'd already have your Series 6 by now, or you would have wasted that money. The point here is, guys, going into this, the other side of the cash flow quadrant, yes, the business owner has passive income and residual income. And on the bottom right side, the investor, their money makes money. OK, now let's think about something real fast. OK, everybody wants to be on the business owner side. Everybody wants to be on the investor side. OK, the only way 
to get to the right side is to inherit a bunch of money. Okay. Inherit a bunch of money. What that means is you inherited a bunch of money from someone who spent their time wisely. I know a lot of people and Blake is excluded from this, excluded from this because of how hard he works. I know a lot of people in this town that were given the things they have from their parents. They were given apartment complexes. They were given 20 rental properties. What that means is somebody else paid a price and built that business or built that equity and then gave it to their kids to inherit. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I want to do the same for my kids. I'm not going to turn it down if my dad gives me an apartment complex. Here's my point, though. If these people who inherit this type of stuff did not learn how to spend their time wisely, what's going to happen? It's going to fail because they don't know how to really pay a price. So what I'm trying to say today is when you look at Primerica, if you look at Primerica, if you want to build a business that's residual and passive, let's say you want to build. And, and I'm going to go into this. And we're going to end sooner than later, like I told y'all, because it's Thanksgiving. I want to respect your time. I know people have family coming in, but I want you to hear me today because I'm going to be overloading my team with this stuff. If you think about Nick Saban, arguably the greatest college football coach ever. OK, why? Because he first off, he's one of the best recruiters in the world. OK, he's one of the best recruiters on the planet. But let's think about something. What does it take to be a phenomenal football coach like him? Number one, he's got to find good players. Number two, he's got to find good coaches. He's got to keep good players. He's got to keep good coaches. He has to develop relationships with people. He's got to care about people. He's got to be the main guy, the main voice in their head. Now, think about this, Cole. His biggest competition is this is Kirby Smart. The guy that he trained. <laughs> so Kirby said, you know what? I'm going to do everything my mentor is saying to do, and I'm going to take it up another level. So now Kirby's got better players, arguably better players than Nick. I don't know. They're probably evenly matched. But my point is Nick Saban is duplicating himself. Here you can duplicate yourself and go to the next level. That's what I'm trying to say. But you got to have good players. You got to have good people on your team. And to do that, you got to have relationships with people. And that's the Primerica business. Another one of the things we don't talk about enough residual income comes from relationships. Understand that residual income comes from relationships. And here's what I mean. I have relationships with my investment clients. I have relationships with my old recruits. I have relationships with my insurance clients. And guess what? Whenever there's a new baby that comes in, uh, that gets born, they got to set up a college account. Whenever one of my new recruits or old recruits goes and sees somebody that left a job, guess what? They call Mike. Y'all see where I'm going with this? Residual income comes from relationships. Passive income comes from relationships. That being said, this is the last thing I'm going to say. I'm going to let y'all let y'all uh, ask any questions if you want to. But real quick, Daryl, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Mike. Okay, what I want you to do real fast, I'm going to go grab my phone charger. And, Jay, you can chime in. But really fast right now, what I want y'all to do, because y'all both have alluded to me that y'all are going to go full-time. You're already full-time, and Jay's going full-time. If you want to go full-time and be a regional vice president, what are some of the major changes that you have to make right now going into the new year? In the new year. Guaranteeing your promotion going into the new year. What are some of the biggest changes you have to make? Um, off top, one of the major changes I had to make was understanding that I have to be responsible for the growth of my business, you know, understanding that no one else is going to do it for me. So it's going to require me being dedicated to doing all of the different pieces that will be required to grow it, such as my time management. I had to get better at that. I also had to um, become more consistent and persistent. Um, I have to be very, very consistent with reaching out and talking to people, whether that's my downlines, my upline, or uh, new prospects for business or for uh, being a part of the business. I have to be very consistent with that. Um, I have to be persistent, meaning I have to constantly be reaching out and talking and growing and looking to grow more. So that was some of the biggest changes I had to make with doing that because I was um, by going full time, I was given a lot of free time and that free time can be taken up with a lot of bull crap, such as watching Netflix, catching up on all the series or playing video games or anything like that. I don't play video games, but that's something that could have been done. But I had to 
make a mental change um, to make sure that I can make that grow. I, I apologize to everyone. I'm still a little under weather, but I am still locked in. I, I'm not taking a day off because I'm not feeling good. I'm, I'm still here. Um, the good thing about Primary is I can do it from home instead of being in someone's office sick at LSU, coughing up a storm, hoping I don't get everybody else sick. So um, Primerica gives me the ability to sit here on my couch and do this. So um the going full time was 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 probably the best thing I could have done because that gave me time to be available for my boys more often than I ever have so um but that mindset had to change and it it wasn't as stressful as I thought I mean my stress level has came down since going full time honestly I I I feel better about my decision after it took a took about a month to adjust but I I'm here now I'm here now I'm grinding I'm ready to roll and uh, I have some great people working with me. I got great people who are encouraging me. I'm I'm ready to roll, Mike, and uh, hopefully the RVP contract ain't that far out. Darren, let me say something real quick because because I want uh, we need all need to understand something. Okay, whenever whenever you know it goes back to Nick Saban looking at a player or, or Kirby Smart looking at a player. There's tons of players out there, tons of players out there that have the potential. Right? They got the work ethic. They're strong enough. They have the goals, they have the the why, the reasons, but what are they going to do when nobody is watching? What are they going to do consistently when the season ends? And one thing I'll say about that is when you came to me and said, I'm going to go, I'm going to go full time. I'm going to go RVP. There's no question in my mind. Do you have the ability? I'm not worried about that. Do you have the grit? Do you have the tenacity? Now I'm going to share something and, and you didn't, but I'm going to bring this up. You had something very tragic happen in your life this month, right? Uh, you know, that's something that a family member passes, which affects your family, which is a distraction. Now, is it an excuse? It's a very, very good, good reason to shut it down for a minute. There's nobody going to deny that. Then you get sick. Now, here's the difference. As an employee, you would have to be a very mean person to fire an employee for them having to take off work because they lost a loved one or they got the flu. Am I right or wrong? You would have to be a terrible ball right. to fire somebody. Let me tell you something, though. And while all that is true, if you're a business owner, the business owner of mine said they don't care about all that for an extended period of time. Does that make sense? And that's where we all have. When my dad died, it was the hardest thing ever happened to me. He was my best friend. You know what I did? I handled it. I called Blake. I said, man, I'm hurting. He said, I got your back. I did what I needed to do. And I was back at the grind because I had people counting on me. Some people get knocked down. They get the flu and they take the whole damn month off. Guys, the point behind what I'm trying to say right there, Dejanay, is yes, life is going to happen. You have got to be ready for that. You have got to be mentally bulletproof when it comes to those things. Now, don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not being insensitive. What I'm simply saying is until the job gets done, Nothing can really knock you off that track long term or even for an extended period of time. So then what happens? Fast forward, like in my life, when I developed that mentality. And again, I didn't start primarily with that mentality. I had to learn it. And I learned it from paying attention to examples and reading the books. The first book I read when I said I'm going to the next level is Nick Saban's How Good Do You Want to Be? And I made my son read it not too long ago. The second book was Grit. I made my son finish grit this weekend when he was traveling to Shreveport for a football game. Why? Because I want him to think differently. Are y'all with me on that? Your thinking controls everything, right? So with that being said, whenever my one of my best friends, Tyler Craig, dies, okay, fast forward seven years later, Tyler dies unexpectedly. He's got two kids. He's got a wife. He was very important to me. Not only can I be there for his family, I can be there for his team. I can be there for my team. If they need some kind of financial support, they didn't because he practiced what he preached with us. But I was in a different position. I was the person that they could count on to be strong in a terrible situation. Does that make sense? And that's how we have to operate whenever we're going to the next level with a business owner mindset. Right. And Daryl, I've seen you do that. I'm watching you do that. Um, and it's going to take some consistency, but you're on the right track, pal. I'm proud of you. Jay, real quick, I know, and I'm asking you because you came to me this past week and shared what you shared with me about this being your last season at the school. So what do you think that you're going to need to do starting right now, not when you go full time, but starting right now to prepare you for that? Well, first off, I appreciate you uh, allowing me to talk on that and, um, DJ said some of the same things that I was thinking, but for me, it came down really to one word and that was ownership. 
And when I say ownership, it's not just ownership as far as being able to pass the business, but it's, are you going to own your time? Are you going to own your team? Are you going to own your truth about what's going on in the business? And I know for me, I, you always say that, you know, other people are going to waste your time. Don't you waste your time. And so for me, it's being intentional. I think we talk about that word urgent and we talk about that word intentional and we just kind of just use them in passive conversations, but just ask yourself. And this is, this is the level of urgency that we need. Everybody on here, you just received a text message that said you have one year to live. What are you going to do different? Well, guess what? That kind of urgency, everybody on here, if you're not an RVP, you're going to be an RVP. You're going to be an SVP. You're going to go to the next level. You're going to do things differently. You're going to reach out to people. You're going to make those changes right now because you got that text message that said you only have one year to live. Well, guess what? I'm in that situation right now where literally I have about five months and then I'm no longer going to be a state employee. So I have to start right now. I have to start yesterday preparing myself, owning what I'm getting ready to do, owning my time, owning my commitment, owning the fact that if I told you I'm going to do something, I have to own it. We talk a lot about that integrity gap. And I guess to kind of give you a visual of it, your integrity gap is what you said versus what you did every day. It should be so close that you can't even get anything between it based on what you said and what you did. If you close that gap, well, guess what? When you start moving into owning your time, when you start owning the people on your team, when you start owning those relationships, when you start owning the fact that uh, you, you need to go and prospect, you need to recruit all these things, you slowly but surely close that gap. So my goal now is, ironically, whenever you think about closing that gap, it looks like your hands are put together in prayer. So I'm gonna just leave that alone. That's a whole nother message. But to be honest with you, coach, it's just me closing that gap and owning what I'm getting ready to do, because the potential is there, the possibility is there, and the probability is there if we do what we're supposed to do. And we have a great team. We have people that are encouraging me, that send me text messages, that call me, that push me. All those things are necessary. And so for me, getting ready to move into that full-time space, I'm already thinking full-time. I'm already saying, okay, I'm going to be available every day. You know, my kids are getting ready to transition to where dad's going to be taking them to school every day. They're not getting on the bus anymore because I'm home. So now I can take them to school. Now I'm going to be, you know, on field trips. I'm going to be doing those things because I'm going to have the time, but I'm putting in the time now, making those adjustments now. So I don't know if that really answered it, coach. I'm all over the place. I'm excited about what's about to happen, but it just comes down to ownership, y'all. Own the things that you can own and control. That's all it really comes down to. No, Jay, I appreciate that. And, and you know, when, as we wrap up, I'll say this. And and we need to plan for next Saturday to have uh, more people come on and speak. I wasn't sure who all would be on, and I appreciate you all spending your time with us. You said it, and I say this all the time, and it sounds so good. Um, and, the, and, and, and I appreciate y'all whenever you say that that makes sense. Uh, but I'm saying it to myself, you know. And I can't tell you how many times that I've sat there and I've let people waste my damn time, and then I go do the same thing. Right. I just do the same thing. I sit there and I let people screw me around and do this and do that. And then I'll go spend an hour, you know, watching some ball game that don't help anything. And I'm not saying you're not supposed to do those things, guys. But for a certain period of time, you got to invest your time versus spend your time. OK, when you invest your time like we're doing right now, you go to another level. OK, you really, really do. And I love what you said there, because whenever I made the decision, OK, it all starts with a vision. OK, whenever I made the decision. OK, first off, I stopped apologizing to people. You got to stop apologizing to people. Now, if you owe them an apology, apologize to people. But stop putting yourself in a situation where you got to apologize to people. OK, I told Blake that I mean, uh, Jay, Jay that the other day when I'm going to Blake said, man, I apologize. I didn't do what I said I was going to do. I didn't go. I didn't hit my goals. I told you I'd hit. Well, that just means I'm trying to make myself feel a little bit better. You know what we do? Go to work and you're not going to have to apologize to nobody, Jay. Remember that conversation we had? You're not going to have to apologize to nobody. I'm not apologizing to my son so, because I can't send him to a football camp or my wife. I can't get her a new couch. I'm not apologizing for that. No, I know those things are going to come about in my life. So I'm acting right now based off those things I know that are going to happen. 
right? So if you got young kids right now, right? Or if maybe you have an anniversary coming up in the next couple of years that's special, or maybe, I don't know, my wife, we're about to have another baby and she wants this super duper stroller. I don't even know what, I mean, it probably flies or something. I don't know. But she's sitting there looking at it and I'm like, I'm not going to not get you that. I'm not going to say, no, nah, baby, I apologize, but we just can't do it. I'm going to get the job done so I don't have to say no to folks, the people that are important to me. We all have people and you're going to spend some time with them this, this week, I hope. We all have people that should hold us accountable simply because they exist. Does that make sense to you guys? That little girl who just ran around in here under the desk and goofing off, she takes me to another level simply because she's alive. She doesn't even know it. Those You have people in your life. You just aren't looking at it from that angle. You're looking at it based off of scarcity, okay? scarcity versus you know love and abundance right and people that live in fear they operate out of fear and scarcity versus love and abundance and what do i i'm getting i know how I'm, look this this came from a uh, 177 mental toughness mental secrets of the world class or something this is the book i didn't come up with this all right i don't got it like that i worked a sonic okay but what i'm trying to say here is you take somebody like dj that boy ain't operates operating out of scarcity OK, in fear, he said, you know what? I'm going full time. My actions are going to be determined from love and abundance. What does that mean? I'm going to work because I love the idea that I can create abundance for my family. So then the next ball game doesn't really matter. The next fishing trip doesn't really matter. OK, the fact that I got the flu is only going to knock me down for a second. Right now you're thinking abundance. You don't worry about the little guy that told you no. You worry about the hundred people you haven't talked to that are going to tell you yes. And then you become obnoxious. You become obsessed. Right. And then you call your upline six, seven, eight, nine, ten times a day because you want to know how we're going to the next level. That's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. If you really want to call your own shots, if you really want to be in a situation where you can make a choices that nobody has to worry about. Does that make sense, Jay? You know what I'm going to do all week? All week, I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to my leaders. I'm going to go hunting. I'm going to come back. I'm going to do business. I'm going to do whatever it is I want to do because we pay the price most people won't pay. However, last thing I'll say is we're not where we want to be, okay? We are not where we want to be. The only difference now is we're a little bit better than we were. We learned from a lot of mistakes that we made, and it's about to get unbelievably exciting in this business with this group. It's just a matter of like Nick Saban, like Kirby Smart, they're going to finish this season. But what do you think they're talking to their new recruits they're trying to get right now about? They're talking about we're going to do something special these next four, five, six, seven, eight years. They're talking about something special happening for the next decade right now and the season isn't over. That's what I'm talking about. But it doesn't really matter how fired up Nick Saban is. doesn't really matter how fired up Kirby Smart is. Are these players ready to go win a championship? And those guys, they find the players they need that want to help them go to the next level and win a championship, but they got to be on point two. So what I'm trying to say there, guys, is enjoy your week. You deserve a great week. Make sure you spend time with your family. Make sure, though, last thing I'll say, make sure when you're out there and you're walking around and you're enjoying Thanksgiving and the holidays, I would enjoy them, but I get extremely excited about where I'm going next year, and I would start right now. There's nothing wrong with making a mental note I need to ask my mom and aunts and uncles for referrals. I need to ask for that person's number. I heard that somebody just bought a house when we're having Thanksgiving dinner. I need to call them. Don't be obnoxious. Don't be uncomfortable. But you're making an investment. Use every opportunity to create another appointment, to create another avenue, another relationship that will help you build your business. So, guys, again, thank you all for joining us. I love you all. I appreciate you all very much. I don't know what's going to come of Wednesday. I hadn't talked to Blake about that yet. But in the meantime, y'all enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your families. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank y'all.